Breakfast today, we're documenting Jackson Hastings' injury, the fibular fracture which he sustained last night. A lot of people upset about the tackle. It was an injury to the foot just there, so the foot was being externally rotated underneath him, underneath Patrick Carrigan as the tackle was being made. To explain this further to you guys, we're just going to mark where the leg actually is in that tackle, so it's just there. Um, and what's happened there is, is that Jackson Hastings' upper body is being pulled down by the opposing two tacklers. At the same time, Patrick Carrigan's pulling down his torso and pulling Jackson Hastings' right leg uh, over him, which causes an opposing force, and so that's pushing his shin upwards that way. And at the same time, there's an external rotation force being applied to his foot. So that provides a big torsional force to the fibula area, and that's what's resulted in the fibula fracture and likely also an injury to his syndesmosis. Now, the NRL physio has posted this fracture of Jackson Hastings' leg. It's a fibula fracture. We've just drawn the lines there so you get a better idea of what's broken, but it was a two-part fracture. It's what's known as an oblique fracture of the fibula. And you get a better idea of what that actually looks like from the front. We're just going to draw the ankle here for you with some of the structures so you get a better idea of what's injured. So the marking here is from the tibia or the shin bone. Next to it is the fibula bone, which is the bone that is fractured. At the base there is the calcaneus or heel bone, and the other bone that makes up your ankle is the talus, which is marked just there. And the area that is likely also injured is the syndesmosis, which are those red lines, which connects the tibia and the fibula together. And that's what it looks like on your average ankle from the front in terms of a clinical photo there, so you get a better idea. Now, um, to get a better idea in your head what the um, how the x-ray matches to what the ankle looks like from the front, you just need to imagine that you're looking at the drawing from the side view, and that's what the x-ray is actually showing to get you a better picture of how you're looking at the fracture. Now, how bad these fractures are uh, classified according to something called the Weber classification. And Weber A is a very minor one. It's below the level of the joint. And so these this basically is the fracture marked out there on the drawing. Um, and a Weber A is just below the level of what's called the syndesmosis, so that's marked out just there for you. But a Weber A fracture really needs surgery. Usually he'd be walking in a boot, so it's unlikely Jackson Hastings has got that injury as it's been said that he needs surgery. The more likely injury that he's got is something called a Weber B fracture, which is a fracture of the fibula at the level of the syndesmosis, which is marked just there on the drawing. And sometimes these need surgery. Uh, in Jackson's um, case, it may well have been displaced or likely um, evidence of a syndesmosis injury, meaning he needed it fixed. And the third one is a Weber C, which almost always needs surgery. It's above the level of a syndesmosis, so above the level of the red lines, um, and they're almost always needing something done. So that's a possibility that he could have had. Now, this is what he's likely to get. He's likely to get a plate on the fibula there and some tight wraps, which we've previously seen marked on the left there um, for syndesmosis injuries. And the reason for that is, is that likely Jackson Hastings with the mechanism has likely suffered a syndesmosis injury, and that's what would be injured there. See those red lines just there broken in addition to the fracture? And that's what the tight wraps are there for in addition to the plate to stabilize the syndesmosis at the same time. Um, pretty serious injury. It'll take him 10 to 12 weeks at best case scenario for returning to play. He won't be able to walk on the leg for six weeks. So it's pretty likely he'll make the World Cup, but he might not play in the first few games. But look, thank you for listening to our uh, video today. Please take a look at one of our other analyses there. Uh, or alternatively, please subscribe to the Foot and Ankle Orthopedic Surgeon. We really appreciate you listening. Full stop.